Now, with Ronnie's session today, I really wanted Ronnie to come in just because uh, this isn't exactly conversational related, but it's a really good timing to talk about um, social impact. Ronnie's been able to help uh, donate to great COVID-related causes. Now, with Black Lives Matter on the rise, I think there's a, there's a lot of questions that people have about how can I incorporate my brand with a very good cause. And Ronnie has created a platform that does just that. And not only is it a platform, it's, it's about a genuine change in how we want to do business with brands. As millennials, as Ty, Ty was talking about working with millennials, now we can talk about selling to millennials and what they want to see from us and how to genuinely uh, integrate social impact into our business. So Ronnie, with that said, I'll let you take it away. Thank you, Derek. Appreciate it. I'm going to challenge you to say that actually impact should be part of the conversation and that there's a lot of ways that this is part of conversational commerce and the way that you're interacting with your consumer or customers throughout their customer journey, which we'll talk about today of how do we incorporate that into the chat and customer service. And that's a core component because your teams are the front line in those experiences. And that's really at the core of social impact. And I, I love it. And I agree completely. Yeah. And it's, so this, it's a different side of the conversation or it's how are we going to have a conversation about this? Yes. And so I love it. Yeah. Awesome. So I'm Ronnie Sage, I'm the CEO at Shopping Gives, uh, and today we're gonna to talk through three power strategies for social impact success. So before we jump in, um, defining kind of our audience and, and what we're talking about today is that, is that there's the new generation of consumers and they are really buying with their values and voting with their wallets. Um, we are micro philanthropists and we are agents of change. And if you look at this space, um, no assumptions being made that this generation, we call them generation impact here, that's Generation Z and millennials have a massive buying power and they're made up of 136 million individuals and they have 300 trillion that three trillion dollars in buying power in the u.s alone and if you look at that space this idea of cause marketing the idea that a percentage of proceeds or dollar amount will be going back to a nonprofit based on a purchase less than one percent of total spend there's over 239 billion dollars being spent in advertising 20 billion dollars being spent targeting and retaining generation impact, less than 1% of that is going towards cause marketing. And yet that still makes up 15% growth year over year. And these consumers care. They're switching to brands who are more, who are giving back in align with their values. They're spending more when you do, and they'll come back more often. And that's made up of both Gen Z and millennials. They're both saying we care. Another, and the fact is that you guys are spending more. These, you know, our retailers are spending more to acquire these customers. And if we look at a recent study, oop, I skipped ahead here, but if we look at a recent study, um, PW, um, PWR just came out with a report that stated 83% of millennials and Gen Z um, will look into the brand and who they stand for before they actually make a purchase. So when we think about that, there is a, uh, a massive affinity towards this and making sure that your values align with your individual's customers' values as they go through that experience and that there is a very clear and present conversation. So Shopping Gives is a social impact commerce platform. And we enable retailers of any size, really democratizing social impact or what we call cause marketing. So there's a lot of names for this. You'll hear it as cause marketing, social impact. Impact is what we call it, CSR. Um, but we enable this democratization. So any retailer of any size to any nonprofit based on who, who your customer and who you care about, making sure that it's part of that customer journey. And we take a marketing approach to impact. So when we think about cause marketing, when we think about the way that it integrates with your, with your, with your overall marketing initiatives, we want to ensure that there is a positive ROI and that doing good can mean doing well. And that if you are going to be allocating budget towards this, of course, the altruistic value, and of course, it's important to have that. But the more you make, the more you can give back. So our goal at Shopping Gives, coming from 12 years, 12 years of digital marketing experience at some of the top agencies working with some of the top brands, Gap, um, David Yearman, uh, Nikon, managing hundreds of millions of dollars in media, I saw this clear challenge of doing cause marketing at scale and making it effective for me to manage those budgets, and understand how it was playing into the overall customer experience and really driving ROI for me to then prove to leadership that it was worthwhile to reinvest back into this. So today we'll walk you through kind of how this works. But before we jump in, there are four things that you need to know before activating on cause marketing. We actually published this in response to COVID because we saw so many retailers reaching out to us to try to understand the legalities and the regulation. 
There's a lot of regulation in this space that retailers do not know about. So the four things you need to know, I'm actually going to send over a chat right now so that you can access this, or I'll send it over just after. I don't want to break anything on the video, but um, the four things to know. You have to register what's called CCV or commercial co-venture or co-commercial venture. That means that across 50 states, you have to actually comply and state that you are donating and you are partnering with nonprofits. There is the need to be compliant with the way you're talking about impact. And a lot of retailers love to say because they want to hide their margins that net proceeds will be donated. That is actually not compliant and is illegal from the FTC. You have to show the dollar amount before and after the purchase. And that needs to be the final do dollar amount being donated to that nonprofit. So if it was a $100 item with a 10% donation, that means it needs to be 10% of that purchase. It could be pre-tax, pre-shipping, post-discount, but whatever you're showing has to go to that nonprofit after fees. And then the use of name and logo. You all as brands spend a lot of time building your brand out. You need permission to market them. You need the permission to use their name and their logo the same way as you would want your permission to use your name and logo in marketing. So the final piece is, is keeping your records. So you actually have to keep a record and a trace of donations and be able to tie that back to the purchases for seven years post an activation in cause marketing. And with Shopping Gives, all of this turnkey is taken care of for you, all the compliance regulation, all the showing of the donations on the proceeds or of proceeds and uh, the final donation confirmation, the use of name and logo in our technology, you have right of use of, of all of that information and then that record storage as well. In addition to all the marketing that we'll take care of today, you know, I'm going to get yelled at for uh, not having, um, oops, broke something here. I know I'm not going to, we have a, uh, another link here, but uh, I'm going to send this over. Here's the four things to know, and you can get a full details about this. It's not bit.ly, just a natural link. So if you want to go to this, uh, I'll send this over in the chat here in a moment. But now diving in on the three power strategies we're going to talk about today. So I got it. you got it. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it, Derek. Um, today we're going to cover how to approach social impact authentically, how to engage your customers and bring them into your social impact program and bring that social impact into your customer journey. And then how to measure the effectiveness of social impact from both the altruistic value and back to your bottom line. So starting with authenticity, here's my quote I was talking about. 83% of millennials say it's important for the companies to buy, they buy from to align with their values and beliefs. And if you look into the study, you could do a search on it. I'll also provide it after is they are looking at the brand story. And that starts with how do you define authentic impact? So we define authentic social impact being guided by your team's values. So customers buy from people behind the brand. You need to share your brand story. What do you stand for? This becomes the baseline as you evolve the strategy. So if you have this core value system around what you care about and how you talk about your brand and you enable your customers to find that, I see so many sites that miss that, the about us page and having a clear stance of what they care about. This becomes your guiding light. And when you lead with your values, this becomes the filter that enables you to have an open dialogue with your team when there are current events that take place. I can't by any means brush over the conversation of George Floyd. When that took place, for example, I could only be anecdotal in this, but our team sat down and had a really hard conversation. And it was, of course, I brought it to the team and said, here's what my beliefs are. But this organization is not just me. It is our entire team. And let's use our value system to guide us and how we want to talk about our stance and how we want to act and how we want to contribute and what it means for us. And by having those values, it's always something that you could point back to. And that drives authenticity so that you could say, as a brand, here's what we stand for. And here's what we believe in on a regular basis. But when things like this happen, it becomes authentic because you could guide, point back to that and say, we are already giving. But now something happened and we can, we can react to it now, being authentic. Here's a great example of Kenneth Cole, one of our partners that is showing how they care about public health. If you go to what we stand for on an ongoing basis, they're always talking about LGBTQ plus mental health. This is their baseline talking about what their brand cares about. And then they're bringing their team into that conversation. Your individuals on your team have different causes and different nonprofits and different affinities towards different things at any point in their life. They are your front line. They are your micro influencers. From a customer service perspective, 
adding in the cause that that individual customer service person cares about into their link on their bottom of their profile. I care about Boys and Girls Club of Chicago. I care about 1% for the planet. When you have shopping gives on there, you could utilize a technology to then personalize that experience. So when the customer clicks on that link, they can support the nonprofit that your uh, customer service rep cares about. So bringing your team into that and then sharing that around that impact with your team. So that highlighting Kenneth Cole's supporting mental health um, coalition, um, anatomy is sharing a different cause here. They are your micro influencers, bringing them into that conversation sets your baseline of authenticity. Now moving on to customer engagement. A lot here, we're not gonna get through everything today. I'm gonna grab a drink of water real quick. But high level, and I could talk about this for days, we look at how do, our, how do you create a cohesive and bring that customer into that journey and engage them. Customer engagement starts with educating your customer. Testing marketing channels, bringing this into your omni-channel experience, whether you're online or offline or both or your D to C, how do you bring in this to your, all your channels? And then how are you remarketing and re-engaging that customer based on who they care about? So starting with educating your customer. We look at that starting with your emails. So from the initial welcome journey that they're seeing, including what they're doing. So here's Ursa uh, Major, who is, says major, but it's pronounced Ursa Major, um, talking about One Tree Planted. They did a campaign last month around this. They're educating their customer on their initiatives. Matech, again, educating about how it works, where to find the impact, what they're caring about. Or um, I believe this is Solstice Sunglasses, who's showing Shopping give, um, shopping's never felt so good. Shop, choose, but bringing that into the initial uh, engagement with your customer before they even get to your website. And when they get to your website, reiterating what you stand for. So Margot talking about the impact this past Mother's Day. We're saying thank you. We are giving 20% um, off and we are also donating to No Kids Hungry on each purchase. Or recently right now, if you go to Kenneth Cole on this top eyebrow homepage call out, you shop, we donate to the Mental Health Coalition. Driving this home or a home announcement bar, great tools. There's some great apps in the marketplace that are on Shopify Marketplace that are um, available for free to do these very simply. Now, this is one of my favorites. Gorgeous. With a chatbot integration, no technical lift. Automating the conversation and using Gorgeous in an innovative way to incorporate impact into the conversation. So when the customer is getting to your site versus just saying, hi, how can we help you? Or talking about a sale, you can now bring impact into the conversation through Gorgeous to simply setting this on either a, whether it be a page or a, before they get to checkout, having it talk about the impact that your store stands for, who you cur currently are supporting in that message pop-up. And now through Shopping Gives, one of our core features is the ability to enable your customer to actually search and support a cause of their choice. So if you look here, there's a search bar. So when the customer clicks select a cause, you can see it shows the donation amount. This is on JR Dunn, one of our partners. It shows the donation amount. It's part of that FTC regulation being calculated down to the individual product. You have full control over that with Shopping Gives and then you click select. Now they're featuring two causes here. So the customer can either choose one of those causes or they can search from our database of over 1.4 million nonprofits for the cause of their choice. Now, what happens when that customer selects that cause and checks out is what un unlocks the ability to what we'll talk about in just a moment of all this data that you're gonna get back to now re-engage your customer as part of your cross-channel marketing. So now we talk about cross-channel marketing. So educating your audience by sharing your giving, whether that be in your stories talking about the impact. We have some examples from Koyo here and Highline Wellness here. Bringing that to the forefront, this becomes a much more authentic and organic way to talk about your content or just general social posts. One of my, another one of my favorites is your influencers. So bringing your influencers into that conversation. These influencers all have a, an affinity towards a separate cause. Don't assume they care about what you care about just the same as you're a customer ask them who they care about and have them promote what's important to them. Or before you choose a cause, if you're doing a special activation, 
get your influencers organized beforehand around that cause affinity and then engage on that nonprofit activation. With Shopping Gives, you again have the opportunity to set a specific cause to a specific influencer and personalize that engagement on an individual micro-influencer or influencer basis. So it's when that, they say swipe up or shop now, it's going to preset that nonprofit based on who that individual link included. And that goes to remarketing and personalization. So now, as I mentioned back here, we're capturing who the customer cares about on an individual basis. Now, when you store that, we provide that information back to you on an individual level. And you can refeed that into your email. So here's an example with um, Zachary Perel using Klaviyo. They personalize their emails based on who I supported the last time. Now, that means on your dormant customer emails or on your card abandonment emails, you can engage that customer one-to-one. -one. Ronnie, we, we know that you care about Children of Fallen Patriots Foundation. On that next purchase, we're going to do donate to them. And again, when you, they support, click through that link, it will set that nonprofit on an individual basis. So it, even if you're giving them two or three choices here and you don't have a search turn on and you're doing this yourself on your site and you give them two or three options to choose from, make sure you're storing that information and then re-engaging the customer based on that preference. Now, with Shopping Gives, we're providing you back these actionable insights at an aggregated level. So we're able to say, Customers who support the environment spend 20% more. So we should be shifting your, our budgets in marketing towards that audience. Or when you're running ads, if you're supporting multiple causes, you can be saying we have a 1% for the planet, we have a veterans fund, and we have a Feeding America. Being able to target those individual segments on Facebook and then have creative that matches that and then have retargeting ads that match that, and then have the website display a, that nonprofit and drive that home from a personalized journey. So when that customer has that cognitive conscience of, yes, I care, and yes, this is important, important to me, and you're having them raise their hands, and they're already raising their hands, you're using the segment of this customer, Derek cares about Feeding America, and by him liking that page, he's raising his hand saying, I care. So when you drive that cognitive consonance of, you care, you said you care about them. Now get them to engage. You will see these commercial outcomes. Something that we've seen with our partners is that there's a 19% lift in conversion rate through this by incorporating who they care about into that journey. A 23% lift in average order value and ultimately an 18% lift in lifetime value. Now, how do we measure the impact? So I mentioned at the beginning, doing well while doing good is important that you are all running businesses and that if we can enable you to make more money, we can enable you to give back more. How can we funnel those dollars of marketing into the impact space? And how do we measure the success of that? So it starts, of course, on the altruistic side of the good that you're doing. You should be messaging that and sharing that back to your customers. So here's a great example from Succulent Box where they're showing their impact. They're highlighting how it's going back, how your donations will be used, and they're showing the status ongoing of how much impact is being created. Should you be utilizing this in your email journey as a new type of content to engage your customer? Here's all the good we've been doing. Here's how we've engaged. Here's where we stand, driving back to your values page as your cornerstone. So don't forget, here's what we believe in. Here's what our values are. Or imagine if your team members, going through each one of your team members and saying, who do you care about? As part of your onboarding journey of your customer, of your employees, asking them as part of that, what's important to them? And then including that as a highlight once a month on here is, um, you know, Phil and Phil cares about um, Boys and Girls Club. And here's Savannah and Savannah cares about um, clean oceans and having them featured on your page about here's who they are and here's what they stand for. And then that's when you feature them again, it drives back to authenticity. And then you could show on those pages how much you've raised over time for those individual causes. Now, understanding, again, that impact, back to your bottom line, we have a term that we've trademarked, actually. You are all familiar with ROAS, return on ad spend. When we've coined the term return on donation spend, and the idea of this is for every dollar donated, what is your return on it? So $1 donated, $6 return. And how do we measure that effectively? We do that in a few ways. We're looking at the lift and conversion rate when customers engage with impact. 
So if you are setting up a campaign like this, whether it be with or without shopping gives, but talking about impact, making sure that you're tagging the events of that impact messaging, or if you're doing AB messaging or different email messaging in segments, breaking down those campaigns and segments to measure when there's an impact message versus not an impact message. And if a customer is opting into a donation versus not opting in. So we're able to measure that lift and show. So here's an example of how we integrate through Google Tag Manager and then pass that to, into analytics to show when they're engaging with Shopping Gives widgets at any point in time throughout the customer journey, whether there's a default, meaning that the, the retailer's already donating to the nonprofit. So if we went on Kenneth Cole today, that would be an example of how they're donating by default. You can't select the cause of your choice, but here's what they strongly believe in. And if a customer engages with that, we're showing that lift because of the events. So here's a, one of our clients, we're showing clear lifts and engagement between Shopping Gives versus non. And you can see here, AOV increases across the board once customers are engaging with impact. And then again, through our tool, you're able to see these AOV lifts. So clearly showing how AOV is converting with or without donations and how your customers are engaging with that. So you'll say, okay, well, maybe the customer is adding on more value to the card. The AOV is being increased and now they're choosing a cause, but they were planning on checking out so they're choosing a cause. Well, that's how we're showing and that's why it's important to measure the activation of conversion rate and the activation rate to say, it's not just the customers who are, are spending more are actually choosing a cause, but that customers who choose a cause actually spend more. And we're able to show that again through that conversion rate lift. And then that activation rate is very important because you're able to see how many customers are actually engaging with the impact, are engaging the conversation, and then you're able to segment those customers and then drive them back into, whether it be different segments on Klaviyo or Drip or any other type of uh, ESP or SMS campaign, having different conversations with different types of customers. So keep on giving, help us create more impact to the, imp uh, uh, to the impact customers and the ones who have not engaged yet, get them to engage because once they become a donor, they are a more valuable customer for you. So now from a shopping gifts perspective, what we are doing for you to bring this all together is it's on your site, your style, frictionless and integrated. We are fully managing donations compliance throughout the entire process, automating that, reconciling every order down to the individual order. So if there's a return on one of your sales, you're not paying that donation. And then all the data, business and insights, driving exclusive data to better allocate those budgets, to have that personalization and segmentation to drive that business outcomes. We're working with top retailers across the entire industry. d c retailers are looking for us to guide their social impact and be that turnkey solution for them. That's all I got for you. Thank you very much. You can reach us at shoppinggives.com or follow us at shoppinggives. Love it. Thank you so much, Ronnie. I love what you've put together. Um, and it, I think if it, sadly, we still have to make a case for integrating cause marketing into e-commerce, but um, if ever the case was made, it's quite clear that the ROI is here. And when we're thinking about what we want to stand for and be as a brand, it couldn't be clearer that um, that's, this needs to be incorporated one way or the other. Um, so, so thank you so much for, for proving the point. Uh, yeah. And, you know, as you, you know, brands try to dip their feet in the water with this, you know, our team of impact agents would be happy to discuss kind of identifying what is the right cause for you, how to think about and go through this strategy. Um, you know, is it the right time to start for you? Um, and kind of how to approach this is a very, you know, whether it be on one product or across all products or special activations, um, now is the time. You know, I always talk about, we have all seen that how e-commerce has just massively uh, grown over the last quarter. Um, that 2023, I always said, was the year really of impact. That at that point, everyone would need to have an impact strategy to even be, be around and exist. And what we're all seeing is that 2023, from an e-commerce growth perspective, just arrived in Q2 of 2020. <laughs> we all have to have that impact perspective now. And, you know, your, your customers are no longer um, looking at your marketing and trust your marketing the way that they were. And that your conversation can't be the way that it was. And if you're not talking and you're not saying something, um, you, you know, it's going it to be really challenging for you to be successful in this, in the current environment. Yeah, I, I agree completely. And, and that was going to be my question to you is how do we determine what cause you mentioned 1.4 million uh, nonprofits, what cause is, um, is the right one to support? And, and I think it's, it can be tricky there. I think a mix of what you said with your team and asking internally, what do we stand for? 
um, and then asking the customer what they stand for. And then maybe with your platform, there's an opportunity to see what the customer chooses and combine that with your own values. How the data inform you, Derek? It's, you know, we have portfolios that highlight different um, groupings of causes. So we, you know, cause portfolios. So the environment, the veterans, um, equal um, racial ju injustice. We had just, you know, just launched of course around this initiative, uh, the COVID um, initiative. So you could set those more broad strokes by turning on that search. You can actually inform your team and, and your strategy around what is the cause and what is the sediment of our, of our actual audience. And that is not through a passive action or ask, but that is actually through the, the transaction, which is the most valuable insight is that this is actually what they chose in order to convert and in the process of converting, not just saying, do you actually, you know, that, that's the cognitive contents idea is when I ask people, do you care? Yes, of course I care. Great. Now take action. And when they take action, that's the important piece. Mm -hmm. You're capturing that data. And so let the data inform you. Put, put, put the money, money where your mouth is. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, absolutely. I love it. All right. Um, so guys, we have the link down here in chat to check out uh, Shopping Gives. Honestly, it needs to be incorporated into every e-commerce store at some point. Uh, the question is whether it's today, tomorrow, it's good. it needs to be in the near future that you're looking at integrating cause marketing into your business. I, maybe the early, I see it's, that's the, that's the tricky part. The early store struggling to find product market fit might not be profitable yet. My, you know, they might be thinking, Oh, I'm concerned with my margins. I won't be able to pull this off. But at the same time, by integrating this in from the beginning, you stand for something right away, differentiate your business. And as you showed the numbers, you know, it proves in an ROI standpoint when you're able to pull it off properly. Yeah. And, you know, we do have packages that range from all sizes. So, again, that democratization of it, I su su um, supplied my uh, our four businesses page if you're looking for more information. But yeah, whether you're just getting started and just launching, we have partnerships for you um, where it's pay as you grow, essentially. And then we have, of course, scaling partnerships for more integrations, more suites of technologies, more support, um, more customization of the program as you scale up here. But I, I, my belief is that there's really you, never a wrong time to get started in impact and that the earlier you start, the easier it is to grow with it. And, uh, you know, with our tools, you can shift your donation amount by product, which is important for your, as you talk about margin, especially for drop shippers or any other type of, uh, you know, tight margin business. Um, having that control is extremely important. So even excluding products is, a, is an option. Um, so when you think about that, you could set a, a flat dollar amount, be $1 per purchase versus a percentage of the purchase, all possible. I love it. Awesome. Ronnie, thank you so much.